In the last lecture, we have seen an example of push-down automata where we design a push-down automata that accepts event palindromes over the symbols A and B. And we have also taken some examples and we have seen how the push-down automata actually works. And if you have not watched that lecture, I request you to watch it first before you proceed with this one. So basically how the push-down automata works is that in the first state, which is our initial state Q1, we just push a symbol Z0 into our stack in order to denote the bottommost symbol of our stack. And then in the state Q2, we read the first half of our string and then we just push it onto the stack. And then when we reach the midpoint of our string, state Q2 goes to state Q3. And then in state Q3, what we do is we read the next half of the string and we compare it with the elements of our stack and see if the elements that we get are same as the elements on top of the stack and we just pop them. And finally, when we reach the end of the string, we check if Z0 is the bottommost element and if it is, we pop it and we reach the final state. So that is how it checks whether this is an even palindrome. But there was a question that we had and what was the question? The question was that how do we know that we have reached the midpoint of our string so that we can go from state Q2 to state Q3. We don't know how or when do we reach the midpoint of our string. So we said that when we encounter an epsilon we understand that it is the midpoint of our string and we go to state Q3. So let me assume that there is an epsilon over here which is at the midpoint of this string. But how can we just assume that the epsilon is only over here? As a human being, I know it because this I can just look and say that this is the middle of the string. But the system that we have designed here, how does it know that this is the midpoint and the epsilon will be present here in order to separate the first half and the second half? So the answer is that it doesn't know that the epsilon that separates it is over here. So what we will assume is that we will let the machine or the push on automata assume that there are epsilons everywhere on every sides of every symbols there is an epsilon. So in this way we assume that there is epsilon present after and before every symbol set we have. So this is a much easier assumption to make and let's see how does the machine or the push on automata that we have designed works when we assume that there is epsilon on every sides of every symbols. So let's see how it works. So here I have drawn the diagram of our stack in order to explain to you how this actually works. So don't be afraid seeing this diagram. I will explain to you step by step and we will understand and we will be clear how this works when we complete this lecture. So let's keep in mind that the string that we are going to check for is A, B, B, A. And this is an even palindrome because whether you read it from forward or backward, it is still A, B, B, A. Even from backward it is ABBA. So according to the push on automata that we have designed, this string should be accepted. Alright, so let's take these inputs and see what happens. So the first input that we have is an epsilon. Now in Q1, if we get epsilon, what happens? We don't pop anything, but we just push the symbol Z0 into our stack. So this is what I have shown. In state Q1, when you get epsilon, it just goes to state Q2 this one Q2 and then this is our stack and we push the symbol Z0 to our stack. And why do we do this? We do this in order to know that what is the bottommost symbol of our stack. Okay, now the next input that we get is A. Now when we get A, what happens in state Q2? In state Q2, if you get the input A, what we do is we don't pop anything but we just push that A into the stack. So we are still in state Q2 and the A that we get, this A, we just push it into the stack and we don't do anything else. And now after we reach this A, here there is an epsilon and here there is a B. Now I told you our machine doesn't know that whether it should be an epsilon that should be read here or whether it should be a B. So we will consider both cases. We will first read an epsilon and see what happens and we will also see if we read a B, what happens? So first, let's see that if we read an epsilon, what will happen? So we are still in state Q2 and in state Q2, if you get epsilon, what happens? You should not push or pop anything from the stack, but just go to state Q3. So that is what I have shown here. 
if you get an epsilon or if you read an epsilon here from this state q2 if you read epsilon we don't push or pop anything from our stack the stack remains exactly the same but we go to the next state which is state q3 all right now let us proceed in this direction and see what happens now we are in state q3 and then the next input that we get is b now even here there are two options we can either read b or we can either read epsilon now if we read b let's see what happens in state q3 if you read a b then what you should do is you have to check if b is the topmost element of the stack so let's see if we are going to read a b we see that b is not the topmost element of our stack the topmost element of our stack is a so we see that this root cannot proceed anymore this is wrong now I said we can also read epsilon. We could also assume that instead of B, it is epsilon over here. Now in state Q3, if you read epsilon, what happens? In state Q3, if you get an epsilon, then we have to check if Z0 is the topmost element of the stack. And if it is, then we can go to the final state. So let us see. If you read an epsilon in state Q3, we have to check if Z0 is on topmost of the stack. But this is the stack we have. And the topmost element of our stack is a and it is not z0 so this root or this branch is also wrong and we cannot proceed in this way so these two cases have failed all right now we have to come from where we started we came this way now there was another option that is this root and what is that root we already read epsilon and a and instead of taking b we took epsilon and saw what happens we saw that this root fails there is no path to follow so we know that this taking this epsilon is not correct so we have to take a b instead now if we take b in this state q2 let's see what happens in our state q2 if you get input b we don't pop anything but we just push b into the stack and we still stay in state q2 and that is what i have shown here in state q2 if you get b which is this b we don't pop anything but we just push or insert this b on the top of the stack this was my stack and i have inserted b on top of the stack and we still stay in state q2 all right so we have completed up to here now the next symbol that we can read is epsilon or we can also ignore this epsilon and read b there are two cases so first let us read this epsilon and see what happens so if you read epsilon in state q2 what happens in state q2 if you read epsilon you have to go to state q3 without pushing or popping anything from the stack so that is what i have shown here if you read epsilon in state q2 then we just go to state q3 without changing anything in our stack this was my stack i read epsilon my stack remains the same but we just go to state q3 so we are over here right now and let's see if we proceed in this way where do we reach so what is the input symbol that we read we read epsilon and now the next symbol that we have is b now here also we can either read a b or we can either read epsilon so first let us read b and see what happens so we are in state q3 and in state q3 if you read b you have to check if b is a topmost element of the stack and if it is then you have to pop it now we are here and then we read a b and if we read a b in state q3 you have to check if b is a topmost element of the stack and when i check it i find that yes b is indeed the topmost element of my stack so i have to pop that b and i still stay in state q3 so this b which was there is popped or removed from the stack and this is the condition of my stack right now now since this direction is proceeding in a good way let us continue in this direction and see what happens okay so we just read this b and we are not considering this epsilon right now so the next input that we can get is either a or epsilon now let us see if we get a what happens in state q3 if i get a then i have to check if a is the topmost element of my stack and if it is i have to pop it and still stay in state q3 so we were over here right now and we considered that we are reading the input a now if you read the input a what happens you have to check if a is the topmost element of the stack and when i check it i find that yes a is the topmost element of my stack so what i have to do i have to pop that a 
and still stay in state Q3. So I have popped that A from my stack or I have removed that A and I still stay in state Q3. Alright, so we are here right now and it is proceeding in the correct manner. So let us continue in this way and see what happens. Now we have read this A and then what we have is epsilon. We have reached the end of the string actually. So there is an epsilon over here and we are in state Q3. In state Q3, if we get epsilon, what happens? We have to check if Z0 is on top of the stack and if it is, you can pop that Z0 and go to the final state Q4. So let's see what happens. We were over here and what we read was an epsilon because we have reached the end of the string and we have to check whether Z0 is the topmost element of the stack. And yes, Z0 is the topmost and the only symbol in my stack now. So I can pop it. So I have popped it and we have come to the final state which is Q4. Q4 is the final state and my stack is empty. So if you follow this path, you see that we have reached the final state and also our string was accepted. So that path is the path that you have to follow in order to accept the string A, B, B, A. Now there are also other routes that we have to see and check whether those routes lead to final state or not. So let us check all the routes and see where do they lead. Now here this was the path we took and we reached the final state. Now here is one path that we did not discuss. Now here instead of reading an A at state Q3, if we read epsilon then what would have happened? What I am talking about is this one. Here after we reached this epsilon, we read A and it was correct. But instead of reading this A, if we read epsilon, then what would have happened? In state Q3, if you read an epsilon, you have to check if Z0 is on top of the stack. And if it is, you can pop it and go to the final state. But let us see what was the condition of our stack. So if you look here, if you read an epsilon, you have to check if Z0 is the topmost element of our stack. But this is the stack that we had. But the topmost element of the stack was A and not Z0. So you cannot proceed in this way anymore. So this path also had failed. Now there is another path we have to check that is this one which we did not see. So this was the part in which instead of reading a B in state Q3 we read epsilon. Now which is that one? It is this one. So instead of reading this B if we had read epsilon instead over here then what would have happened? Then in state Q3 if you read an epsilon, what happens? You have to check if Z0 is at the topmost of the stack. And if it is, you can pop and go to the next state. Now let us check what was the condition. If you read epsilon here in state Q3, you have to check if Z0 is at the topmost of the stack. But it is not. The topmost element of the stack is B. So this path also cannot proceed. It fails. Now if we come here, this was the way we took. But this way we did not discuss. And this is the path where we read a B instead of epsilon in state Q2. And what I am talking about is this one. So here after we reach this B in state Q2, instead of reading an epsilon, if we directly read this B, then what would have happened? Then in state Q2, if you read B, what happens? You don't have to pop anything, but you have to just push that B into the stack. Now. That is what happened here. In state Q2, if you read B instead of epsilon, then we just push that B into the stack. This was my stack and this new B that I got, I just pushed it into the stack and I still stay in state Q2. Now here there are two options again. That is I can either read epsilon or an A. This is the portion I am talking about. This B we have here and we have to proceed further. And there are two options that is either to read this epsilon or to read A. Now let's see if we read epsilon then what will happen. Now remember that we are in state Q2 and in state Q2 if you read epsilon you have to just go to state Q3 without changing anything in the stack. So that is what happened over here. If you read epsilon nothing is changed in the stack but we move to the next state Q3. Now let us continue this path and see what happens. Now in state Q3 there are two options that we have either to read epsilon or A. So we were over here. Now we can either read this epsilon or this A. Now what will happen? If you read A then in state Q3 you have to check if A is the topmost element of the stack and if it is then you can pop it and still stay in state Q3. But if you read an epsilon 
Then you have to check if Z0 is at the top of the stack and you have to go to state Q4. Now let's see what are the conditions. So here in that state Q3 after reading A, B, B. Now if you read epsilon, what you have to do? You have to check if Z0 is at the topmost of the stack and if it is, you can proceed to the next state. But we see that Z0 is not the topmost element of the stack. It is B. So this one, it fails. And then if you read A, then what happens? In state Q3, if you read A, you have to check if A is the topmost element of the stack and you have to pop it. But if you look at the stack, the topmost element or symbol of the stack is B and not A. So this also does not work. This path also fails. Now the only path that is left is this one. That is, instead of reading epsilon, we read an A at state Q2. And what I'm talking about is this one. And instead of reading epsilon, we read A. And in state Q2, if you read A, what happens? You have to just push A into the stack and we don't have to pop anything. So that is what we did. This A, if we read it in state Q2, we just push it into the stack. This was my stack and I put or push this element or symbol A into the stack and I am still in state Q2. Now, when you reach the state Q2, after reading this final A, the only thing that is left now is epsilon. Now, if you read epsilon in state Q2, you have to just go to state Q3 without changing anything in the stack. So, we read that epsilon and we go to the next state Q3 without changing anything in the stack. Now, what happens? Our string is finished over here. There is nothing left to read. And when there is nothing left to read and we see that we are not in the final state and also our stack is not empty. So this path also fails. So the only path that works is that first path which I showed you. This one. You come like this, reading A and then B and then after the B, if you read epsilon, then it comes here and then if you read B again and then if you read A and then epsilon, then we reach the final state. So if you read it in this way, A, B, epsilon, B, A. So if you read this epsilon over here, then you are reaching the final state. So we know that this epsilon is the one that separates the string into exactly two halves and that is the only path that we have to follow. So this is how the push on automata really works. It first assumes that there is epsilon on each and every sides of every symbols and then it checks each and every path. So you have to check each and every path and then you have to find out if there is any path that is leading to the final state and then we can say that that is a path that leads to accepting the string and that string will be accepted and in all other cases it will not reach the final state. So there is one path that leads to the final state that means this string is accepted. So if we see here this was the diagram that we had and then there were many paths that failed and the only path that survived was this one. So you see that if you read A, B and then epsilon and then B, A and then we reach the end of the string and we reach the final state. In all other cases, the paths they failed and this is the only path that survived. So this is how the push on automata actually works for accepting the strings of even palindromes. Now in the next lecture, I will be showing you another example where we will pass a string which is not an even palindrome into our push on automata and we will see how it behaves. So I hope this was clear to you. If you have any doubts, you can drop in the comment section below and I request you to watch it once again if you are not very clear. It's a bit lengthy, but once you understand it, it is not very difficult. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.